Please state your name. Ryan King. And what is your favorite hobby, Ryan King? Hunting and fishing. What what got you into hunting? Um, what got me into hunting was my brother and my dad. How so? Because they were dove hunting before I was, so I always wanted to go with them. And then my dad basically was like, you can only come, uh, you know, once you're 13. That's when you get to go hunting. And what do you hunt, Ryan? Mm, doves, duck, uh, deer, hogs, quail. It's tasty. You shoot it and eat it, pretty much. Okay. And how often do you hunt? Uh, I hunt every hunting season. Hunting season usually well starts in Texas from beginning of September, Labor Day, <clears throat> all the way through uh, the end of March, end of April, depending on the turkey season. It varies. Explain to me how seasons begin and start a little bit. Not You don't have to go too in, in detail. Basically, so like you have certain seasons when certain birds migrate more. Um, deer, it's when they're in a rut. Ducks, it's when they're migrating. You what, have flyways. You know what migrating is. I'm sorry, what's, um, what's a rut? When you're in the rut for deer, basically what that is, is you've got the bucks that are in... They're ready to get it on. There's a certain time in the deer season. You've got two months, and it basically goes from the north all the way down. The rut starts, and what it is is when the does go in heat, uh, when they're most fertile, and that's when the males um, pick up on that scent, basically. And they have their own scent as well. It's called their hawks, which are on their hind legs. And that actually brings the... That's when most people shoot bigger deer because of the fact that the bigger deer are more concerned with getting a girl versus being safe. Talk to me about um, duck hunting. Talk to me about duck hunting some more. Okay. Well, like I was telling you the last time about all the duck hunting stuff, it's a little bit more expensive and requires a little bit more time setting up wise. Um, it's not as easy as dove hunting is. Uh, you have to get out a lot earlier in the morning before the sun's coming up in order to set up all of your decoys. Uh, you got to have waders because you're going to be in cold water. Um, if you end up getting a dog, you know, that's another huge expense, getting the dog trained, spending time alone just training a dog. Even after you've paid for him to get trained, you just spend at least probably four to five hours every week just working him just to keep him in shape for duck season. And you got to think about it, duck season only lasts for, you know, three months basically out of the year. So you're training a dog for nine months to get three months of good hunting out of him. So it takes a lot. Um, and then, you know, decoys cost a lot, especially depending on how high skill you go. Duck calls cost a lot. Like I said, I mean, some cost 20 bucks, some cost up to 200 $300 for a duck call. Um, would I want to pay that? No, but some people do, you know. So what I'm really saying is, is dove hunting is probably the easiest way for beginners to get a, a grip on hunting and, you know, see if they actually like it or not. A cheaper way to get into it versus duck hunting and deer hunting. If you enjoy dove hunting, you'll enjoy duck hunting, that's for sure. But like I said, it's a lot more work and, uh, it is more rewarding though sometimes than dove hunting because it's pretty cool to be out there and see huge flocks of ducks come in and land right on top of you and you know you have four or five people in the blind and you're all sitting there as quiet as possible just doing your duck calls and then all of a sudden they land and everybody whoop shoot 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 man <laughs> and of course there's always a little bit of trash talk you know when someone misses and someone else knocks down three birds or something like that so it's a lot of fun Ryan, explain to me a little bit in further detail why it's hunting is important to the um, ecology as far as, or the zoology, however, however it's the correct way to say it. Um, well, it's important because of the fact that if it wasn't for hunters and the way that we regulate it, you know, it's not just go out and shoot as many birds as you want, you know, you can only shoot so many. Um, so it's a it's a population control type deal where the government or the, as a, it's not really the federal government at all because the day that happens we're in real big trouble but everything's governed at a state level for it um, because every state has obviously different 
ecologies of animals, you know, more mass. Uh, Texas has a far bigger mass of deer population than uh, many other states, but that's strictly because we have so much more land. And, you know, another thing with Texas is we're in the central flyway, so we get tons of migratory birds down here, uh, from dove to geese, ducks, I mean, all different types of waterfowl. So everything has its own uh, limit on it because they don't, you don't, as someone that hunts, you don't want to see those birds gone. You want to be able to shoot those birds for the rest of your life. I mean, I want to be able to, when my sons are, you know, 12, 13, 14 years old, I can take them hunting. I want them to be able to shoot the same birds that I got to shoot growing up. You know, I don't want them to be able to say, oh, well, I don't get to shoot because someone was unfair and shot too many of them and now there's no more to shoot, you know. So it's, you know, you find all these groups, especially like Ducks Unlimited, uh, you know, even Trout Unlimited. You've got a lot of groups out there that are huge hunting enthusiasts, even the NRA, where they want to control, uh, you know, how many animals you can do. And there's, so, there's a reason why there's so many studies out there. I mean, look up the actual real studies on animal population and you'll see how well people manage it. And that's one of the things that I, uh, you know, our whole family does at our deer lease. We manage our deer. Uh, paying members, they get to shoot one big deer a year, only one. If you see one and you shoot it first, you know, weekend of the season, then you see another one later on that's way bigger, sorry, you already took your big deer. You can shoot a cull, but that's it. So, um... You know, managing the animal population is a big thing. You know, without hunting, it wouldn't be, the animal population would be way out of whack. It wouldn't be balanced, uh, as balanced as it is. Talk to me a little bit about the dangers of what can happen when they get overpopulated. <clears throat> What's that, what um, you know, over, overpopulation, uh, a lot of times you'll find, especially with overpopulation, diseases will become more prolific uh, to where there can be a die-off where a bunch of animals will die. Uh, you have that right now actually out in uh, Arizona and New Mexico with CWD, chronic waste disease, where and they're worried about that coming into Texas because they haven't managed it as well and now that the chronic waste disease has gotten into some of these animals, uh, it could, you know, cause a huge decline in the deer population. Ryan, talk to me a little bit about the responsibilities that there is for hunters to not only be safe, but also um, be legal. Um, well, I mean, it's very important to be legal. Poaching is a thing that any self-respecting hunter will not agree with. Um, poaching is something that has caused huge declines in animals. Um, Explain it just for anybody who doesn't know, what is poaching? Poaching is illegally shooting an animal without either a license or it being on someone else's private land, you're trespassing and shooting deer off of their land. What, what's the purpose of hunting? What, what are the gains of hunting? The personal gains of hunting, once again, being out with family, friends, uh, just enjoying their company is a nice thing. Being outside and being able to relax and just kind of not worry about the rest of this other stuff going on in the world and focus on just something that has been going on for ages. Um, hunting, I mean, since early man, Neanderthal man, they have been hunting game in order to eat. Um, so I definitely think that it's a, it's, it's humbling to be out there and hunt something and realize that you're out there in the middle of nowhere and you know, you're not in the middle of city where, oh, if I'm hungry or, oh, if something goes bad, I can just go right down the street or call 911. That doesn't exist, you know. And so you have to be more careful. And that's the other thing people are like, oh, you go out with the gun, these guys, and they're getting drunk or whatever. No, that's not how it is. You're extremely safe when you're going hunting because you don't want to have an accident. Because if an accident happens out there, it's not like if it happens in the city where ambulance is down the street to help you out, man. So, I mean, it's definitely not driving the species into extinction if anything it's keeping the species in check same thing with deer uh, you look at some of these places these parks uh, where people have all these lake houses uh, you know even some of the national parks and state parks where there's no hunting out there well now they've got so many deer that they're encroaching in on even the people people have been attacked by them uh, and there's just too damn many so now they're actually hiring people to go out there 
and kill the deer because they realize you can't just not kill an animal and just let them be the way they are. What you have to realize is there is no real natural predator anymore for deer. Uh, great start. <laughs>